Ahoy, lad. Up here, you're one of them peat bagging types, eh? Well, I see you've dressed the part, but are you sure you can climb with these scrawny mitts of yours? No bad for a first ascent with all that swinging around. As I always say, the climb shows your true character and the peak frees your soul. have to start somewhere. Welcome to Peaks of Yore, a small indie game that has gripped mine and many others' lives since its launch almost a year ago. I am in love with this game and will confidently say without a shadow of a doubt that this is the best movement game I have ever played. This game doesn't offer much, but it's not trying to. It gives you what you need, and the rest, well, it's up to you. Do you want to take the game casually? Enjoy the scenery and tackle each climb, hold by hold? Or are you a speedrunner? <laughs> Constantly challenging yourself to be the best you can be, perfecting the game's mechanics to speed through everything as fast as possible. Well, those who chose the path of speed are the most interesting to me, as the first game where I fully got into speedrunning with a community that not only supported my journey, but each other's as well. And it's because of this that I wanted to give back to them. So how will I do that? By documenting the rich world record history of the most infamous peak of your Solemn Tempest. Being the biggest and hardest map in the game, it's no secret that this mountain has captured the attention of people who want to see these insanely skilled players push the world record time lower and lower. With the game being released in October 26th of 2023, it wouldn't take long for groups of players to find the game and start tackling the peaks. Among these players were a couple of peakers that had some very important roles for this video. These players were Zero and Mr. Gringus, the creators of the Discord server, and some would argue the grandfathers of the Peaks of your community as a whole. Now we will get back to Zero later, but for now we need to focus on the pioneer for solemn Tempest speedrunning, Mr. Gringus. Now it's impossible to say who had the first record time of ST, but just over two months after the release, Gringis would upload the first domino in this long chain of events. Peaks of Yore, Solemn Tempest, 36 minutes and 26 seconds. Zero ropes, that was it. The first ST speedrun, and it was done in only 36 minutes. At this time, there weren't even that many who dared to try finishing the damn mountain. But this beast is out here speedrunning it? Yeah, he was. And he was just getting started. to take an intermission at this point to explain a few things. First things first, the routing flag. This gem of a tool is vital to speedruns of this game, and especially ST. Oh fuck. It allows you to go into a kind of 
practice mode, where you can have a checkpoint that you can slap on any part of the mountain to practice that section as many times as you wish. The thing about the routing flag, however, is it didn't exist. At least not for a while. All of Gringus's runs up to this point have been done without the routing flag. Which is honestly just so admirable that he was able to accomplish all that he has by practicing without the flag. I even heard that he had multiple saves on his game to set to different spots in ST just so he could practice them all individually. True dedication. It was also at this point that the game's movement mechanics would get changed and optimized by a significant amount. The reason I haven't exactly been talking about or going over strategies and skips in the runs themselves was because they were mainly on the old patch, with this run being the last one on that patch. A lot of really powerful tech got nerfed, but it also just introduced some better mechanics that I think helped the game out overall. But would ST speedruns suffer because of this? <laughs> <laughs> and no. Let's take a look at some of the next runs he would upload. A couple more speedruns on the new patch with a slower time than his previous record, but still good times considering all the changes that have occurred. But still no PB. And still no sub 15. Which is important to note because at this time, this was Gringus's ultimate goal. To get a sub 15 minute run. And well, sub 15 was in sight at this point. He was too powerful for some movement changes to sway him from his goal. Because on March 22nd, Gringus's run would be made public. And yes, I mean his run. Solemn Tempest 1427. Sub 15, it had been done. Not only did he reach his goal, but he did it on the new movement patch. Truly spectacular. He really laid the foundation for ST speedrunning, and the community will be forever grateful for him and his contributions. Now, I want to do an interview with every runner that I feature in this video, but Gringus is a busy guy and I want to respect his privacy. So instead, let's take this opportunity to finally have a brief look at what the ST run currently looks like. All right, so this is Gringus's 1427. I will be doing a sort of commentary on this video, and I will be doing this for a couple more runs down the road. Let's just start. We're going to go into a deep dive of this run. I'm going to talk about as many strats and skips as I possibly can. All right, here we go. Okay, so first things first is uh, one thing to note is Gringus. He really liked his FOV really low. Now, of course, that's not super common for speedrunners of this game, but I mean, who am I to judge? Classic swing on the rock up to here. Now you'll notice as well is he is doing some pretty rapid swinging with the pickaxes. Now I mentioned it already, but we got a massive movement patch. And this was one of the techs that you could do prior to that movement patch. This is what people refer to when they call the speedruns to this game swimming is just the way he swings his pickaxes rapidly back and forth, this is how you were able to get a lot of your momentum back before the major movement patch. However, you can't do this anymore. This tech still technically exists, it's just a lot more strictly timed now. You only get three crampons per, I guess, hold. You have to touch a hole to reset your crampons, whereas before, you you had more, you had more crampons. Pretty sure you were able to stack them almost infinitely, not quite infinitely, I don't know. It, the old movement patch was weird. And also, pickaxe swinging doesn't work anymore. Hands is significantly more superior to pickaxes now. They give you a lot more momentum when thrusting with them. But also you have to do them very strictly. I'm pretty sure we were talking about it in the Discord and it comes down to about a 0.6 second time between each hand thrust to give you the pretty much the best uh, momentum possible. 
And then this skip right here, this, th this one, this skip that was discovered, oh man, it saves so much time and effort. It saves minutes of having to go all the way around to the other side and you just go straight up here. It's pretty nice. It's really handy dandy. And then yeah, you go around here to get to this side. It's just, this run has a lot of out of bounds, which is completely fair. It's a speed run. And then this part coming up is really interesting. So you get up to this part, and Gringus goes here. This is the first and only time you will ever see this next skip in this video. We call this the Gringus skip, because this is pretty much Gringus's thing that he did in his runs that no one else really seemed to do. So he would do this. He would jump from that place that he crawled to, all the way over here, and to there. And it's a very tight jump. It's very tight. But that is the Gringa skip. But here we are at the 3k Icicle Horizontal, or Icicle Hell, as some people might say. This seems to be, you know, the part where most people struggle with in the run. But for the speedrun, obviously, Gringus and other speedrunners just kind of go around it. You know, make it a lot easier. Doesn't mean it's still easy. It's still one of the harder parts of the speedrun as well. Because of this. Gotta do this bullshit here. <laughs> oh, man. Yep, that, that part is not easy. But then you just kind of go up here, and then you do everything else pretty nice. It's not necessarily hard after this. Oop. Yeah, right, there's a little trip up there. Didn't all almost failed, but we're okay. The skip does have a weird jump here, where you kind of go up here, boing, and boing. <laughs> and it's a, it's a really awkward jump but it's another one of those that skips a lot of having to go around. And that is just a major thing when skipping a lot of areas in this speedrun is you gotta make sure you gotta find as many ways to just skip having to go around, skip having to go horizontal, make it so that whatever you're doing, you're, you're going up. How high does he make it in this jump? He just gets to the icicle, okay. That's a classic skip though, yeah. Classic little thing, prevents you having to do a little couple extra icicles. And then here, what what skip does he perform? Ooh, gets a little caught by wind. <laughs> uh, I wanna take a minute to complain about wind. <laughs> this mountain has a stupid little fun, goofy, funny, happy, fun time little feature called wind. Wind is essentially an RNG speedrun killer in this game. If you get wind, it can blow any which direction at a varying amount of strength. On Solemn Tempest, it's not awful, but it's enough to be able to mess you up a lot of times. And in a section where there is wind, you get a wind gust that'll push you in a wrong direction. You can miss a hold and plummet all the way to the bottom. Wind is awful. You can't change my mind. Anyway, so let's continue. Ooh, yep. Not quite enough speed here. You'll notice that, you know, it might not seem obvious right now, but a lot of the jumps he's making, he's getting a lot of height, but he's not getting as much height because of how fast he's spamming, spamming his pickaxes and hands. If he were to perform that optimal timing that we talked about earlier, he would be getting a lot more height. But, I mean, this is still really, really soon after the movement patch, and that all that information hadn't been fully realized yet. Right, so yeah, you, you, you come up onto here, onto this stuff, and then here, here's where the funny part of ST skips come. This is where we primarily skip pretty much the entire last part of the mountain. Because we can just come to this little platform here, and jump up to the top. It's from this point that you'll notice not many holds are touched at all. We'll touch this one. 
and we'll touch this one as well. I'm pretty sure actually Gringus, yeah, he doesn't want to risk it. So he's going to grab that hold safely and swing up. And then this is the sketchy part. This part hasn't had a good skip yet. This is important to note that this part has doesn't have a good skip yet. This is really important to note because this is actually a major point of contention in future runs is how do we skip this part because this part sucks as you can tell gringus goes through this part really slowly and that's not his fault this part is just awful and so one of the things that speedrunners had to do was figure out how to skip this so that is another fun thing that we will talk about later and then he does this funny thing where he flies again you know common st run experience you know peaks of your speed running you do just kind of fly and this is honestly just why speed running in this game is just so fun and satisfying to pull off is the movement in this game is just so perfect it feels so good to pull off when you start doing shit like this yeah and then he gets up on top of the mountain and then, yeah, the rest of the run is primarily done on top of the mountain. So, there's very small spots that you can stand on, which is your goal. That's what you're aiming for. You want to try to get to the little spots you can stand on to keep pushing yourself up the mountain. Now, this jump right here, this was one of the first tricky jumps of the run. It takes some getting used to, as you can see. It takes him a second to line it up. And we pray, and perfect, he lands it, swimmingly, that was good. Now, this is still early in ST speedrun, so you'll notice that he is using a lot more of the actual mountain to get up. As we push times down lower and lower, you'll notice less and less of the mountain actually being used, if you know what I mean. But here we are, we're in the final stretch here, nerves are up. Sh palm sweaty you're there buddy just do this final jump here and that should be it just one final swing and that's it the run already looks insane but trust me when i say it just gets absolutely ludicrous later on in this video so stay tuned for the longest time, Gringus just kind of held the record without anyone openly trying to beat him. So it was quite surprising when all of a sudden one day, some guy just joins the Discord server and posts a better ST time than Gringus? Huh? Who? Who? What? Surprise! A new runner! And he's entering the race with a sub-14 minute run! He just couldn't get it verified because of audio issues. Which, if you didn't know, you need game audio in order for your run to be verified on speedrun.com. There we go. Oh, wow! That's so awesome! Oh, yeah, I got the hashtag awesome. dancing in the background. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's that, so cool. That's actually me. That's actually me. Yeah, Is that, that actually yeah, you? Is that actually the nipple Nick? Yeah, this is what I look like. Yeah? You know what? I, <laughs> I believe it. Frankly, frankly, I believe it. Pixie Yor, no, wasn't it? Hold on, actually, wasn't Pixie Yor like the first game that you did actually end up speed running? Yes. Yeah, I haven't speed run before. Yeah, much, yeah. Just, maybe like I played a game a bit quicker than usual, but never, never speed ran it. Yeah, never gone out community. of your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely been a, a different, different experience. Yeah. You did say you played like rage bait games before, uh, kind of. Yeah, I guess like Jump King and stuff like that. Yeah, weren't weren't yeah, you I just did, like I mean. really good at Jump King as well? Yeah, I mean I've done like no fools stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you were you were really good They're at rage bait hard, games. Though. Oh yeah, no, you know all those. I games mean, like the whole point and... of those games is to learn them. Right. So doing it the, like not fully yeah. once isn't that hard anyway. The, the point of the game it. is to learn its goofy, wacky mechanics and then beat the game. Pretty much. That same with PCO. Yeah? Exactly. Secret I was just about to say that's the same deal with PCO, you know. So it makes sense. It makes sense. Now, before I really start asking you anything, I have a feeling I people are gonna ask this anyways. So before I do anything, yeah. where the fuck did the name Nipple Nick come from? 
Okay, so now this is going to blow your mind. Yeah, It yeah. came from a random YouTube video where I thought I heard the YouTuber say nipple nick. Mm -hmm. He actually said nickel nick, and I just rang with it, made it my name, commented <laughs> down below and said, you rang. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And I just kept and it ever since because everyone found it great. So that, yeah, I, I mean, it is great. Up. It's 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 legendary. I mean, like... When At Gringus point, yeah. was the only person running ST, who would have known when Nipple Nick would have came in Nick. to be the next speedrunner? So when you were able to come in, you know, you, 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 you did Peaks of your, you did all the mounds, and all of a sudden, you come into the Discord with a ST world record. No one has ever heard of you before. Yeah, this is it was like what my fourth or fifth message or something like that. I can't even remember. Yeah, I think I actually remember looking at your um, chat logs. It was like the first message you put in was about you beating Free Solo for the first time. And yeah. I think it was like the second or third message. You were like, is this a good time? And you posted your like 1407 or whatever. But you just came in with a world record. And I mean, this was your first ever world record in a speed run. So how did that feel? Just getting a world record? Uh, well, it would have felt a bit better if I was recording or had a recording that had audio, actually. It's For more, your actual first specific. world record, yeah. yeah. Because the first one doesn't have audio. It's no, it doesn't. Video. I mean, it didn't feel like crazy because I, when I was first watching Spiff stream and he finished Tempest mm -hmm. and he showed the, uh, the record for, from Gringers, I looked at it and went, it doesn't seem that hard because right at that point I was already beating every mountain. Well, when I first played, I didn't use ropes, right? Yes. So I just beat every mountain free solo. I didn't use coffee either or pipe up until ST where I realized, wow, this is taking forever. And so I just learned how to use crampons as I went on. So, mm -hmm. I mean, when I first finished ST, I, my first time was a 30 minute run. But yeah, no, I was already really good at the game and I saw Gringus's run and I thought I could easily beat this for just a bit more time. Mm -hmm. And put on like, I don't know, another 50 hours. I think it might be a bit more. And there we go, had it done. Easy. Now that we've been introduced to Nick, let's take a look at his run and see how it stacks compared to Gringus's. Here we are again. Now we're gonna go over Nick's first real good run time that he did that unfortunately he couldn't submit because there's no audio. But of course we're gonna use this time to see what Nick was able to improve upon over Gringus's last run. So as we start off here, uh, he uses the same start that Gringus does. Pretty cool. Generally, I'm pretty sure that the start of the run for ST here, Nick does about the same, yeah. We still use this skip here, where we just climb over all this shit. Skip having to go around. Oop, oop, yep, not quite making that one. Yeah, I gotta redo that one. Just keep moving forward, who knows? Maybe this will still be world record. Even though we already know it will be. But yeah, this is another reason why you should always just keep going, even if you make little mistakes. You never know when your run could still PB or even become the new world record. So generally, he's like about the same time as Gringus here. Like their both their starts are very, very, very similar. So they pretty much have the same time right now, I'd say. Nick's time save is more in the latter half of the mountain. Still does the same skip here. This skip honestly hasn't changed at all since Gringus introduced it. Reach, reach, nice. And if you notice here, like I mentioned in the last one, Gringus, he would get to this point and he would go up here. He would go up here to this ledge and then he would go across with that big old leap and that's what we called the Gringus skip. If you remember though, I said that that was phased out the second he stopped doing runs. And that's because Nick doesn't do that skip in his world record run. He does it the normal way. Now, whether or not it's faster could be up for debate. It was just more placebo effect, honestly, I think that that was just stopped entirely because Nick didn't do it in his world record. So I guess it was more just thought, well, it must be slower then because in the world record, he doesn't do it. And I don't know if he does this any better than Gringus did. He does that. No, I've still got to get that swing in because this part is... Yeah, this part's just sketchy. <laughs> and you'll also notice that Nick, 
in his runs, is still doing the whole ice pick swimming thing that Gringus was doing. But you'll notice that he is technically starting to do it slower. This was when we were starting to see the power of slower swing times in order to get more momentum. And this was also during the phase whether the argument between pickaxe spam and hand spam was faster. So it was still unknown. Now you can't hear it because there's no audio, but again, there's wind in this section, and you heard my little rant about wind in the last Gringus explanation. Uh, it's not good, it's not fun. The run that Nick does in this is generally pretty similar to Gringus's run overall. He just does it like 30, it was pr approximately 30 seconds better. Like for instance, this part here, where as in Gringus, he got to this part, he stayed here stationary for a little bit, grabbed the rock that was right ahead of this little ice patch and then swung. So lost like about, I'd say roughly five to 10 seconds be from doing that. Whereas Nick just goes for it. He just goes for it and almost doesn't work out for him. Luckily, there is a dead Richard there, so, you know. Thanks, Richard. Big preach for saving this 1350 world record run right here. I mentioned this part in the last explanation as well. But yeah, this part still hasn't gotten a skip for it yet, but it is awful still. You can see Nick doing some riskier maneuvers here to try and save time, which pays off. But of course, it comes with the risk of just falling right to the bottom. And you know, that will kill a run. This part here, again, also has wind, which is annoying. But let's see how, how well Nick deals with it. He deals with it pretty okay. You know, struggling a tad, but... Ooh, 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 ooh. That right there, that maneuver is a classic blunder maneuver. That will happen a lot actually when you're doing runs because this game has some really odd geometry with the physics that you have been provided in this game. The movement is great, it's lovely, but the physics and the geometry really don't mesh together that well that often. So in moments like that, you'll find that you'll just get these weird blotches of, oh no, all my momentum just disappeared, I can't move forward because this weird rock just killed all my momentum. The physics in this game can be a little odd sometimes, and it's just one of those things that you have to work around. But yes, I was talking too much. This is a new skip that Nick does over Gringus. If you remember in Gringus's run, he will get to this rock and he will just keep going forward along a relatively normal path before going up. Nick doesn't do that. He goes here and then just goes straight up to the top here. That is another thing that Nick saves time over. And here is the bit of a toughy jump here. Gotta line yourself up. You gotta really get that perfect like 45 degree angle in order to make it here. You can see he slips as well. He, he almost slips off, but he makes it and the run is saved. Oh yeah, right, this is another new thing. If you if you remember in Gurgis's run as well, he got to roughly this point in the run, and these rocks here, he would just keep going up the normal way. We don't do that anymore, because we, again, just keep going up. Like this. There's a little ledge that you can go in, and a bunch more that you can just keep shoving your little body into. Just, just keep going up. Now this was done pretty well as well, and then you just go up here, and this is more out of bounds. Instead of doing the normal stuff that Gringus would do, you go up along here, swing off on this rock. There you go. Up you get. Swing all the way to here, and then you keep going up, and oop, didn't quite make it. But there is more out of bounds that you can do. But otherwise, he is at the top. And that is the 1350. Pretty cool. He seems pretty happy about this was the first time he got world record, I do believe. So his first world record one was his 1350. Audio broke. Oh no, catastrophe. Have to do another run. And then he got his, it was like 1407. But yeah, GG. Good run, Nick. Now, Nick's 1350 was uploaded April 5th. 
it'd be a while before we would see another ST run from him, but that doesn't mean we weren't busy. For instance, it was obviously around this time that I was dipping my toes into speedrunning. And the reason I mention this is because I would hang out in the community voice chat where Nick would also often be. Fucking old scary! Old scary! I'm trying to get a good time on old scary. But the best I got is a 282. Why does he have crampons? I was gonna say that. Oh, I just got a 258, holy shit. <laughs> this was a great time because it was just a bunch of us coming together to have fun while trying to get better at this game. Now, by this point, if you have been an active member of the Discord for more than a good few months, you might be wondering why I haven't mentioned a couple of names. Oh boy, this section is gonna be fun. You see, there was some drama in the community around this time surrounding ST speedruns. Enter our first player here, Sir Thursday. Okay. This runner would challenge Nick's record with a run he ended up submitting that was a whopping 13 minute run on the dot. But it never got verified when it was submitted. Sucks this wasn't approved. You're on the leaderboard in my heart. I think he just didn't submit this because he wants to do it with a sub-13 instead. I did submit the run. The mods have a personal vendetta against me, and none of my runs get approved just because they don't like me. It's bogus. The mods are a joke. Vendetta? It has to be that complicated? Now I just want to know how it started. That's a great question. Let's find out how did it start. Their beginnings come from an earlier point, when Sir Thursday joined the community discord and started posting videos of him performing exploitative texts that otherwise obviously wouldn't be allowed in speedruns. This would be fine initially if he didn't gatekeep how he did them, Andos would still try his best to patch these exploits so they wouldn't be an issue, but it didn't stop there. When the server admins tried calling him out for it, they claim he got really defensive and apparently said things along the lines of speedrunning is just a dick comparing contest. Ironically enough though, he would start submitting speedruns of his own to speedrun.com after a while. But that's not even the worst part. The run moderators immediately noticed something fishy about the runs he would be posting. In a quote by Zero, his timings were too perfect and consistent, and we started suspecting macros. Well, damn. The gameplay was just too robotic. It was unanimously agreed upon to ban him from the leaderboards and reject his future runs because he refused to provide proper evidence, like a proper explanation or recording with a hand cam. Now we return to his 13 minute ST run and why it wasn't accepted in the first place. The drama just doesn't end there though, as someone else was about to wake up one morning and ST would just click for them. <laughs> While all the Thursday drama was happening, a mod in the Discord server was also doing ST runs to try and get a world record for themselves. So shortly after Thursday's 13 minute ST run was posted, Nurgle Gaming would end up uploading his 1255, beating the 13 minute record by 5 seconds, technically being the first sub 13. The run was verified quite soon after and didn't raise that much suspicion at first. But some of the speedrunners noticed something odd about the run. The movement that was displayed in Nurgle speedrun was almost too floaty. Word quickly began to spread about the current verified ST record looking a little fishy, which caused more and more people to look into it. This is of course around the time that I was active in the voice chats, discussing peaking. So naturally, I was one of the people that ended up in this group. Same goes for Nick, who was helping analyze the run, considering he really knew the mountain the best at the time. Also with us was an extremely talented modder, Caden. He was helping a ton with testing the things Nick was able to analyze as seemingly impossible jumps, or jumps that are otherwise not as easy. Like for instance, this jump here near the beginning of the mountain. Watch this jump real quick. It 
It might not be blatantly obvious, but this was one of the tells for us. If you noticed, he stands on this little ledge here and then proceeds to jump up to this ice patch. Now normally in a speed run, you do this by swinging on one of these rocks up to that ice patch, because you can't do it by standing on that ledge. Now, I want to shift our focus to Nurgle. Uh, that name <laughs> might ring a bell. <laughs> um, of course it does. Yeah, so what was your initial reaction to Nurgle coming out and beating your time with his 12.55 initially? Well, it, okay, well, it started off with Thursday beating my Yes, it did. But Thursday, obviously, a lot of drama with Thursday. Oh, Fair I know. Enough. Bit of a bit of a short fuse on that guy, but <laughs> yeah, uh, he beat it first, and then immediately Nurgle beat his and got sub thirteen. I think yes, it was a twelve fifty five. That was out of nowhere because he had he had done speed runs before, right? Mm -hmm. But they weren't really. I well, I was watching them and they weren't really you know up to par or whatever. Watching that run, I'm suddenly thinking. How have I just missed all of this? How have I just <laughs> not, not, like wow? I I must really suck because this is like insane. How is he doing this jump that I can't do? And eventually, I did start to get some of his jumps, but that's because I implored you know different techniques and different yeah, timers. exactly. But yeah, no, I don't know. It just strange guy. I was the worst thing about it was I was just happy that someone was finally competing against me mm -hmm. because it'd been like what like a month or something. I, I don't even know how long it was since I got my thirteen fifty. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I no one really been. competed with you. You took no, Grinkus's yeah, time, no and then the, really the only two people that really tried to take it from you were ended up being cheated runs, so no one yes. really tried to compete with you. And so ends the ST drama arc of the ST history. But there wouldn't be much time to breathe, as an even bigger arc was just about to begin. Let's call this one the training arc. This began when all the Nurgle drama was coming into the spotlight, and our team was discussing the run. Nick was hard at work doing runs at this point as well, but someone would end up DMing him, asking him to train them in the ways of Solemn Tempest speedrunning. And it was none other than Astral Spiff. Apparently Ludwig was going to be hosting a grand speedrunning event called the Fast 50, and Astral Spiff was invited to the event. And the speedrun he wanted to showcase at the event? Peaks of yore. You got invited to a funny little speedrun event. And the speedrun event was Fast 50, Ludwig's event. But I was really curious, actually, because out of all the games to pick for that event, you picked Peaks of Yore. I'm really curious as to why. Because Ludwig does a bunch of stupid rage game climbing stuff and i was like <laughs> it's gonna be streamed on his channel i'm sure they'll like another climbing game i mean yeah honestly that's fair i've seen ludwig he does do a bunch of those games it seems like a game that he would enjoy yep it doesn't have the the newness that makes it really free ah uh, yeah yeah so i mean i know like i kind of know his modus operandi and and there's things that take priority, for sure. I guess that's fair. But I don't know. I, I also just never really looked at Peaks as a rage bait game as well. No. Like... I'll look 
Tempest felt that way at times. Well, yeah. Tempest was... We have came to this conclusion many a times, but Tempest is definitely a bit large of a difficulty gap between, yeah, say, Bulwark and Tempest. It's yep. a little daunting for most people. Yeah, I mean, that's why I called my Bulwark video a tutorial, because it literally is. It it literally is, yeah, exactly. It's just to get you used to the picks, and then the rest, yeah. well, fuck you, figure it out yourself. Yeah, pretty much. It's. I think it's a fine. I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing that it was no. such a difficulty gap. Makes it very special. It does, it does. It did persuade a lot of people from finishing the mountain. That's one of the biggest yeah. things I've noticed, is a lot of people will come into the Discord and they will complain, be like, oh my god, I just spent 20 hours getting up to like the 5k point and I fell again, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, man, no, we've all been there, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. But it, the important thing is just perseverance. Mm-hmm. Except he didn't know how to speedrun. Last time he played the game was when he beat ST for the first time, which took him about seven and a half hours, which is normal for people's first time. But to speedrun it? At least he went to the right guy. Nick was delighted to help, and soon would begin Spiff's training arc to become an ST runner. Nick really wanted to get the world record back before they started though. He technically did have world record at the time, because all the runs beating his time were no longer valid, but he wanted to beat those times anyways. On the day that he was supposed to go have the first training session with Spiff, he was doing ST runs one final time while in VC with me and some of the other members, and right before he had to go, he ended up popping out this banger of a run. Nurgle drama, there was the other big thing that happened, which was Ludwig's Fast 50 event. Spiff was invited, oh, yeah. and the yeah, game did, uh, yeah. the game Spiff chose was Peaks of Yore. He did end up calling you instead of, say, like, Gringus or anyone to... Or Nurgle, who had the record. Or Nurgle, at the who had the record at the time, but... Thank God. <laughs> that yeah. would be atrocious. What was your reaction when Spiff did end up actually approaching you? Well, you should know that you were there. You were there in VC. Was when that? You messaged me. Oh, fuck. Yes, I probably was. You oh, shit. You was because no, I went, and I remember now. I yeah, remember guys, now. Yeah. Spiff oh, just messaged me, guys. I thought <laughs> I got a message from his server because they both have the same profile pic. Yeah. And yeah. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember. I was actually in disbelief, was, you know, actually. Yeah, because you yeah. you just nonchalantly said, "Oh, Spiff messaged me." Spiff just messaged me. <laughs> what? <laughs> to ask me to trade him about Tempest for event with Ludwig. Oh, I, don't I don't know if he wanted me to keep that secret. Didn't last long. Lasted about a second. <laughs> yeah, it did so not last very the, long. I at saw all. the message pretty instantly. <laughs> and I obviously was pretty excited because I was like, "Huh, this guy, I." Uh, been watching for about three years. I'm pretty sure it's three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, I I thought about talking to to YouTubers before or people that I look up to and stuff like that. And you know, it's always like being a dream or whatever. You always dream about something like that. Yeah. When it actually happens, it's a bit crazy because it's like maybe I do. <laughs> maybe I am doing something cool for once. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe, maybe I'm not worthless. <laughs> yeah. Not no. So I'm freaking out because I'm like, hmm, I have to talk to Spiff in a call alone. And not be awkward. Oh, okay, never mind, it's fine. I'm never awkward. No, never. Actually, I do actually want to know, how was the training session with Spiff? How did it go? 
when it went, it was just really fun. Like I said, it was just, it was just a good time. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with everything I taught him. Obviously, we know a little bit better of how movement works compared to them. Mm-hmm. Although I think at that point we were pretty, we had it solved, like mostly solved. Even if it was still a bit, it was more it, yeah. It was still early, but we had it relatively figured out. Even if there were some skips, I wish I could have taught him. But yeah, that mm-hmm. takes time. So and we didn't have a lot of time. No, not so at all. I just kind of, just kind of gave him like helped on the parts that he was struggling on most. He would message me when he was practicing and about sections and how he was getting through sections, and I would tell him, "Yeah, fair enough. If it works, it works. That's all that matters. Yeah, just got to get through it." Didn't end up mattering because he didn't get there in the actual run, other than the rank flag. He did do the entire, like, bit of end section yeah. without using one. No, I, I think it went great. I think I did a pretty decent job at teaching. That's good. Although I usually think I'm pretty That's bad good. at teaching. Although he's not the only one I've taught at this point. I've taught a couple of other people how to play. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you are, you do have a tiny bit of a legacy now in the community as being a sort of mentor for i guess yeah. for st and peaks in general because you've taught a couple people now you have taught spiff you're teaching a couple or say new people to the run of st i believe because yeah, there's a uh, yeah there's a couple more people and this is a psa to anyone watching this video if you want to get into peaks of your and yeah, get into solemn in tempest minute. running Hit up this guy. This guy right here will, will be five years more than life. happy. <laughs> this guy I will be no more time. than happy. I will do anything for money. Uh, uh, you, One pound an hour. More money than Spiff gave me. No. <laughs> <laughs> he paid you an exposure. You have a so hundred subs on YouTube now. Come on, man. Oh. Does she wait till he uploads the peaks for this? Yeah. Maybe it'll go a bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, just wait. Oh, one you day. just wait one day in the next year or so. Yep. One thing before I do end the interview part. You got anything else you want to add? Anything you want to say or mention? Anything you want to plug? No, not really. Well, no, 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 all no. right, that concludes this interview with Nick. Make sure you don't go subscribe to him on YouTube and Twitch because he doesn't want what? you to, actually. So, yeah. I didn't, I didn't say that. Don't I, look I in the description <laughs> of this video because his links definitely won't I, I be there. <laughs> but he hates me. Yeah, no, I despise you. He's a you. against me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, definitely don't look in the description. His links won't be there. Now, real quick, I just want to give a huge thanks to Nick for being in this video. You were a huge player in this story, and I just, I couldn't have made this video without you. So thank you. And, yeah, so you ended up picking up Peaks of Yore. Great mm-hmm. choice, by the way. <laughs> but you didn't have any prior practice besides beating ST for the first time. But you did pick out a teacher. You picked out Nick in order to teach you. But was Nick the first person that you thought of when you wanted to learn the ST run? Or did you also think of recruiting Gringus or anyone else? Yeah, well, it would have been Gringus if Nick hadn't come into my chat and been like, yeah, I got record. Yeah, so really, no, I was he did do that. For, <laughs> I was looking for the most accessible best. And I also heard that Gringus kind of like took a break from the game. Yeah, so, so like, after his best time that he got, which was like 14, 27, he ended up just taking a big old break. And he hasn't come back to running the game since, but he's been busy with college and stuff. Imagine doing college over speed running. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> imagine. Yeah. <laughs> after just starting to learn the run more, what do you think about the whole ST run from top to bottom? or bottom to top, what do you think you struggled with the most about the run? When I was doing the run, the biggest thing is that I wasn't approaching it in a normal speedrun way where, like, just go for everything, and if you fail, try again. Like, I was approaching it in a way that I was going to have to do it once in front Mm. of an audience. So I needed oh, yeah, yeah. every okay. time there was a section that was like, wow, you know, I get this 25% of the time. I would look for something else because I wanted or like 
I would yeah. need to focus on that because I needed to be able to get up the mountain. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that there's definitely some harder skips on the map and just being able to find just a workaround for a part that isn't really super easy is a good idea, honestly. And that was really smart. But also about that run, what do you think was your favorite part of being able to do the run? At the event or the run in, or the run itself? Let's say both. Uh, it had been a while since I got really obsessed with a run. And like grinded mm -hmm. it every day, so that was a really fun two weeks. It's just something I like to do. Like, yeah, you know, I, I do this. I I do content full time, and <laughs> I can't be putting six hours into a speedrun every day full time because I like to make YouTube videos, not just yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's just really nice to. It's almost like a treat to myself to be able to grind a speedrun every once in a while. Kind of every few months, I'll, I'll do a, a fun grind. So yeah, it was pr probably my favorite speedrun grind of the year. Um, and then getting to do it at the event was cool because it's criminally underrated and showing as many people as possible was a treat. That is super cool. I love that. I also really enjoy the speedrun grind every now and then. It is really enjoyable until my you know roommates will come in and be like, hey, well, uh, I haven't seen you in a week. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? You know, just doing some speed running. Don't worry about it. Now, while training was happening, it was difficult for Nick to attempt runs himself, with being busy teaching Spiff and all. Nipple Freddy doesn't hit the same. Since I started Nipple watching Freddy. You. Now, I called this segment the training arc for a reason. It's not just Spiff's training arc, because he wasn't the only one training during this whole time, taking advantage of Nick being busy. But we will find out who that is soon. After many long and rigorous weeks of STing, Spiff would go to the Fast 50 and show off our game that we all hold dear to our hearts. Well done, Spiff. We were very proud to have you represent our community. I don't know if you'll talk about this later, but I ended up having pretty gnarly input leg on the computer at the Ludwig event, so I ended, up, that. I ended up doing pretty poorly anyway and using flags, but I was still able to showcase the run. And you know what, that's, yeah, I am aware of that. I did remember seeing you showcase the run at the end, and it was a little, it was a little heart dropping when you did fall at near the end there, but... Yeah. We were still more than happy with what you were able to showcase. It was super, still super cool. Yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine that I wasn't super optimized for being able to run that in the event. I almost wonder if the other speedrunners also had the input lag or so whatever. What happened is it had that computer had only been used for controllers all day. Oh. And then I took over it. I did my run just with the input lag. I noticed it right away, but I didn't want to slow down the event but right after me alpha rad did his neon white run oh and he was like <laughs> uh guys there's crazy input lag on this pc so i'm not like i'm not just coping literally yeah. alpha rad stops the event for like 20 <laughs> minutes right after me because his neon white run needed good input time yeah i mean i just <laughs> and he did he wasn't as like you know i i didn't want to I didn't want to mess with the event. He was like, uh, guys. But um, at the Fast 50 event, were you really nervous at all doing the event? How were you feeling? I was nervous until uh, I saw chat. And it's just like 10,000 people from my community spamming Plink and mm -hmm. another 10,000 from Ludwig's community just joining in. Just joining in. <laughs> yeah, no, I do, I do remember that. I remember because Nick actually donated like a hundred dollars during that moment and he was recognizing all the plinks as well it was really funny yeah and i was nervous because of feeling the input leg right away and not wanting to sound like a baby on stream but mm, then yeah. when all the donations started coming in i realized like it wasn't really about the run i was getting to showcase the game and like my i raised more in an hour during my segment than any other hour of the event so you did at the do end of the that. day yeah <laughs> yeah at the end of the day that's the greatest success that i could have asked for out of doing it so i wasn't nervous after a couple minutes in once i realized that uh a bunch of money would be raised and it would be funny watching me fall so 
with that all behind you, peaks might now just be a moment of the past. But, you know, it might not be over. There's a DLC on the way. There's a peak editor oh, sure. on the way as well. Oh, God. Yeah, the well, peak, you know. The peak editor is, <laughs> is a daunting concept. Yeah, no, we, we, we've thought about it, and it'll mm -hmm. be... It'll be cool to see what people make, you know. There'll there'll, oh, yeah. there'll be some yeah, the thirty thousand <laughs> wall of doom. Yeah, you know, we got Olympus over here with like <laughs> yeah, exactly. ten times the height of ST. It, yeah. Fucking hell, yeah. Let me start speedrunning this. Yeah, what a yeah. great idea. Hour long speedrun. But those are indefinitely in the future. We don't know when they're gonna release. But sure. in the meantime, do you have any plans to return to peaks? Uh, not on stream, but I have a video just about the grind and the Ludwig event. Oh my been, god. Uh, cooking for longer than I'd like to admit. And I, oh, really I know. have to lock myself in a room and finish it because Nick has been complaining. Because Nick won't stop shutting up about it. Yeah, I thought so, actually. He brings it up every few streams. Every like, yeah, time, sorry. every time Dude. I'm talking to him, he's like, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, this, you know, I'm this about Just... this speed run. And then Spiff still hasn't made that <laughs> Peaks video yet. You know, no rush. Whenever you want to. It'd be, I think it'd be funny to make Nick wait another year, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see. I gotta be in the right mood to work on it. Oh yeah, no, there's that's totally fair. Things are coming. I'm super excited for the DLC when it comes out. I'll probably Yeah, I'll definitely be back for that. Anything else you want to add before? No, I think uh you know, make the Ludwig event video in less than a year. Less, less than, than a year. Than okay. Year. Yeah. That's that's a good time frame. It's not going to get trashed. I've had plenty of videos that, like, you know, are in that state, and then I'm just like, eh, and I trash them. But it's, it's not going to get trashed. Thank you so much for joining me. Yep. It was a pleasure to be able to have this nice conversation. I really appreciate it. I'd like to give another huge thanks to Spiff for being in this video. It means a lot to me as someone who's inspired by you. But now that Nick was done teaching, what now? Well, I mean, he did get challenged to take a world record for a different category. The category being the expert book percent. The expert one consisting of The Great Bulwark and, of course, Tempest. But oddly enough, during this run, he would end up squeezing out a new ST record just a few days after the Fast 50 event. And what was the time he got, you may ask? Well, it was a sub-12. On 11.54, this was it. A time that Nick could truly just be happy with for now. He knew he wasn't done, but this was a good time. But of course, this would not last very long, as our next player's training arc was coming to fruition. And this player was me. Oh boy, this part will be fun. It's gonna be cool to actually be able to talk about this from a personal experience. But yes, my training arc began shortly after the Nurgle drama as well. I didn't really expect much from myself at the start, but I set an initial goal to accomplish, which was to get into the top three ST runners. But what I didn't know at the time was just how into it I would end up getting. I was practicing daily. And it did not take me long to start getting good times. I was really proud of myself, but not as proud as I would be when on May 28th, I made it onto the leaderboard. With a 1445, I had done it. But at the time, my run was 20 seconds from beating Gringus's time. And considering the time save that Nick had on Gringus's run, I bet that I could get second place. That's why the NEXT day, I would end up getting a run that was, well, 20 seconds faster. Just barely beating Gringus's time by two seconds. 
two seconds, but it was done. I had second place. I could claim my title as the second best person to speedrun this mountain, but this was all public knowledge. It was relatively well known that I was doing some ST runs, but it was obvious that I was nowhere near Nick's level of skill. Well, that's what everyone thought, at least. Shortly after achieving second place, I conspired with my friend Caden, the modder I mentioned earlier, to go dark and train rigorously to get to and beyond Nick's level. The next two to three weeks, I would spend days and nights practicing the route. I even remember the day I got my first sub 12 minute run, but unfortunately it was an 11.58, three seconds off Nick's record. But instead of being defeated, that was the day that I knew I had what it took to become the world record holder, and I didn't want it to be a major secret anymore. So on June 16th, I hopped into the community VC after being silent for so long to show off everything I learned to everyone else in the community. It was a really neat moment because everyone in the VC was watching me doing runs and knew that I could do it. And later in the afternoon, after a number of dead runs, I did this. Can I be ST while doing this? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck. I'm right back. I will, I will be ST while doing this. Oh, that was uh, world record! I got world record! I got SC world record! Oh, I got world record! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, Clary! <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Who is this? Something so stupid because you got used in the video. Hi, I'm Taka. Oh. I'm edging really hard. <laughs> hey, what? What? No. Oh my god. It was such a momentous occasion. This will forever go down as one of my favorite moments. My first ever world record. After a little celebration, Nick would eventually join the call, and it would not take long for Nick to respond with his own time. <laughs> and I mean like, no time at all. It it took him like two hours. He got an 11.33, immediately retaking the record. But now, I was equipped to keep going. I went to bed that night after spending a lot of time analyzing Nick's new run, seeing where I already saved time on his run and where I can improve compared to him. Even head honcho himself Zero chimed in to provide some analysis on my times compared to Nick's. It was apparent that I had a really good start being ahead of Nick for about the first half of the run, but would end up falling behind later in the run. This is perfect. Now I know what I need to improve, so let's train. It took me a couple days of attempts and practice, but I would soon be back on top when I broke the record again, pushing the time down to 11.24. The record was once again mine, baby! But now that I was first again, I wanted to achieve a new goal of my own. I wanted to try and be the first to push down the ST time below 11 minutes. I wanted sub 11. So while Nick was busy doing other things at the time, I honestly don't really know what he was doing, I took it upon myself to keep up the grind. But now that I was at the top, I honestly found it harder to find new ways to save time. When I was grinding to get world record, I was able to look at other people's runs, see their little skips and things that they have improved on over my run, and be able to implement that into my own runs. But being in first, the only person I could really compare myself to was myself. The only way I felt like I could improve runs was just by getting better and being generally faster. I would get little PBs here and there, but I just, I really wanted that sub 11. And then this run happened. Oh. My. 
God. That was going to be it. That was going to easily be the sub-11. And I blundered. You can even see me venting to Caden shortly after that mess up. I am devastated right now. Not even lying, I was five seconds away from finishing the mountain. Second last jump. The timer was at 10.40. All I needed to do was finish, and I would have finished with a 10.45. And I messed up. Smadge. I was pretty defeated after that, and just decided that it was time for me to take a break from runs. But apparently that break was all Nick needed to come back. Nice, 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 heavy. And there it is. He, he beat me to it. At first I was a tad disappointed in myself for not sticking to it, but just honestly more so, I was more than happy to see Nick doing runs again. And at the end of the day, Sub-11 has been achieved. The hell yeah! A momentous occasion for ST Records. It's always a good day when we get a new sub-minute run. But sadly, this is the end of my arc, as I ended up picking up other games and projects and was also really busy with college finals at the time. That day on June 28th was the last day I played Peaks of Yore. Alright, I have moved myself to this side of the screen, because, you know, I'm right here. Before we move on to the next runner, I want to show off my best run that I did that shows off all the new skips that we were able to find since Nyx 1350. So, this is 11 minutes and 6 seconds, my best run that I was ever able to do. Before we get into this, one thing to note is this is around the time where we finally started to implement the use of coffee in speedruns. What does the coffee mechanic do in this game? It gives you a momentum boost when you're swinging on holds. It doesn't give you any crampon boost at all, it only has to do with swinging. So you'll notice at the start of my run, I hop up here, I drink a pint, I fuck up I guess, I hop up here, I drink a pint, and then I do this. My beginning is super refined because the funny thing about me speedrunning this game, I was resetting a lot in the early first like 30 seconds ish of the run, which in return made me practice the first 30 seconds of the run a little too much, which in turn made me pretty damn good at it. So I was able to do the first 30 seconds of the run pretty smoothly. Oh, the nice. And of course you'll notice the significant slower hand spam instead of the fast pickaxe spam. This was after we realized the power of the hand spam and the polyrhythm of crampons and hand spam. Again, we drink more coffee here because we go up here and I do this funny thing where I just swing all the way up to here <laughs> and then go to here, yeah. Another thing that Caden found up that's upcoming is if you jump up here, swing off this rock, you can go all the way up here. Whereas before you would go onto a little ledge, then jump up to this rock. It's just, my run has a <laughs> My run has a lot of little minor just optimizations. Each thing just makes it seconds faster, which what was overall I was trying to accomplish just to get that sub 11. And I wonder if I do it in this run, but I discovered something that you can do here in this part here. Yes, I do end up doing it. So there's a rock there that you can swing off and go all the way up to the 2k ice wall. 
I discovered that, and that since has been implemented in every run. a good time, but I could definitely be a lot faster. Yeah, you could be, but you're not, you dipshit. Anyways, I'm trying to talk here, you fucking asshole. Anyways, yeah, that little skip there, I discovered. And I didn't do it in every single run like, I did. At least five seconds. Shut up. I don't think I did it in my initial world record run. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, fucking hell. Okay, so... This skip here, right after the 2k ice wall. You d <laughs> this was a goofy skip that took me a couple hours of practice to get down. If you just so happen to swing off of uh, here, I'll just show it to you first, actually. This little rock here, just go all the way up. <laughs> yeah, so if you swing from that rock and go all the way up to here, that saves a lot of having to fendangle with the rest of the ice patches to get up to this point. Saves a bunch of time, is a little bit difficult though. However, that skip still isn't fully realized because you can make that jump even harder by swinging off that rock I did and not only going up to this little ledge here, but going all the way up to here from that little rock down below. I didn't do this in this run, obviously, but it's a possible thing that you can do. <laughs> that swing thing right there is a very powerful tool that we use in runs. The whole, here, I also want to talk about this little part here, but the whole getting up to a thing, getting enough momentum, swinging off a rock with two hands and launching yourself is a really powerful tech that we were able to start utilizing more and more, especially in ST speedruns. It was used a lot in prior speedruns to the other mountains because, I mean, it's easier to practice them because they're they're not ST. And the whole swinging thing and launching is just a really, really good way to get a lot of momentum. But also, right here is another skip that we were able to implement where if you just swing off this rock here, you can just go all the way up here and skip having to do that, that little stuff little down below. Shut up! All right, now let's... Oh yeah, I also, I drink coffee here. Let's see how well I perform this part of the run, because this is also a hard part of the run. Oh yeah! I forgot about that! Yeah, so um, we just, we ended up just getting to the point where we skipped those four icicles and just bounced off the wall. <laughs> I, I don't know, I just think this is a funny little skip here. So yeah, you just go up here, do some bouncing, and then you climb up. <laughs> and then this part's relatively normal, except for one part coming up. I'm pretty sure Nick was able to discover this skip. It was either Nick or Caden. But if you just so happen to go up here, go onto this little ledge here, and hop up all the way over here, you can just skip this whole entire next section by just going over this big old plane here. Another big skip that is able to skip a lot of things, except for this next part here. In order for this skip to work, you have to perform this really tough jump. Get all three of your crampons and then land there. It's a tough jump and it takes a bit of practice to learn. Up I get though, and you can see I got all the way to that little ledge there, and that was because of my perfect hand spam timing. If you watched Gringus's or Nick's previous run, which we went over, that skip, they only went up to about the previous icicles. They weren't able to get to here because they were still utilizing that old pickaxe technique. Utilizing the new hand spam technique, we were really able to get a lot more distance. This is one of the ways that approves that. A little bit more ring around the rosy, and we're up to here now. I hated this part. I just want to say, this next five seconds of the run right here, I hate. Because of this little jump I do. Even in my run, I fuck it up. You're supposed to get to that rock and then swing up to here. The wind is also present in that spot, so if you get terrible wind RNG, you're going down to the bottom as well. I just really did not like that part. But if you get up onto this ledge, you're generally okay. Now this part here I've also optimized. You can go all the way up here, big strides, and just grab one of these rocks and continue going. You don't have to go down to the ice patch and then back up. 
This part still hasn't changed. We still swang a lang from that ice patch over here. But now we get to this part. And if you remember in the previous few runs I've explained, this is the part that was a real big point of contention where we were like, we need to find a skip for this. And we did technically. I'm gonna see if I can get a view. Yeah, you can kind of get a view of it. This little patch of land right here, our first original concept of this next coming skip was to land on this edge and go all the way up here. So me, Nick, and Caden spent days. And when I mean days, like we spent like five days on this skip right here, just trying to find the most optimal way and fastest way and easiest way of doing this skip to skip that nasty section where you have to do all those tiny little horizontal ice patches. This is my version of this skip that ultimately ended up not only being the easiest way, but also the fastest way of doing this skip. So we launch off here, and then we use this patch here to launch yourself all the way to the top here. And that's the skip. <sighs> this was an endeavor of a skip, but I'm really glad we were able to figure it out because once you are able to get it, it's pretty fun and it is able to skip that just awful section. So yeah, that's the story of this little skip. I am quite proud of myself for, for finding this. That was like my one big contribution to the speed run of this mountain. This next coming place has a little optimization here. You can just go from that ledge all the way up here if you have good timing. You don't have to go to the ledge, other ledge, and then up. You can do a little time save there. This run was just all about little time saves that you could do. This was also around the time that this skip here, that was like one of the harder ones, is now one of the easy skips and is relatively consistently done because of the new hand spam techniques. It, was, it became a lot more consistent. But then I go up here, I do this, I swing off this little rock, and then this is the ending that I do. I hop up on here, jump, and then swing off here. Except... I do a little bit of an oopsie. Yeah, so I did a little oopsie at the end. I uh, bumbled a little, which is not the biggest deal. Like, it wasn't going to be sub-11 anyways, but it would have been like an 1103 or 1104, not an 1106. But you know, whatever. Two, three second time loss. But yeah, anyways, that was my best run. And let's move on with the video now. Now, before we continue, of course, we have to have an interview with Cloudy. Hey, dude. So, how was peaking your... Bro, shut the fuck up. Oh. It, but anyways, welcome back, Nick. He definitely was back after his little break, because while testing a pathing mod that a community member made, he cut the time down again to a 1032. Now the record was 30 whole seconds under sub 11, and, well, the newest and biggest goal had been realized. Sub 10. Now, Nick was the closest to this goal at the time. It seemed he was going to be the one to do it. But in classic Nipple Nick fashion, he decided he wanted to take another break from ST runs. Which is honestly really fair. Kinda like I mentioned, there would be no progress made on ST runs until over a month later, when an unexpected player would end up making an appearance in the story that would end up completely taking over ST world records. Please welcome back to this story. Zero had always been here from the start. A legendary speedrunner that has dominated pretty much the entire rest of the peaks of your speedrun leaderboard. Except for the boulders, that title belongs to Baz. Hey Baz. But Zero always seemed to avoid ST. We always did joke though that when Zero did tackle ST that it would be over for every other runner. So what happened when he did finally do ST runs? <laughs> <laughs> well, his first completed time of ST was an 11.17. His first completed 
time. And on the same day, he got a 1047. Insane. On the day that he started doing ST runs, at the end, he was already in second place. Already. But he wouldn't let us see his runs yet. He knew that if he was going to upload a run to the leaderboards, it had to be the sub 10 minute run. So let's go back to the beginning. So you have been speed running pretty much all the other peaks except for the expert books for like the whole time, pretty much since the game came out. Yeah, I started playing the game, I think, uh, at the end of last year. But yeah, it was uh, something like last November or some shit. Maybe oh, yeah, wow. a bit before that. So yeah, like pretty soon after the game came out. Yeah, like two, two month, one or two months after, yeah. Yeah, okay. And you just... have you? Do you have history with speedrunning any other games? Or was this your first game that you really got into speedrunning? Uh, yeah, that, that's really the first game that I speedrun like, seriously. I, I tried to speedrun Dark Souls back in the day, like maybe 10 years oh. ago a little bit, because uh, that that was the, the time where I, I got introduced to the, the speedrun scene, actually. And it, it, it was through uh, Dark Souls speedrunners. Okay. And it got, it got me interested. But I never really got serious enough to, to compete, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, Pixel Pick, of Yours is the, the first game I, I really dedicated time uh, to it. Yeah, and you, like, you dedicated a lot of time. Like, how many hours do you have in the game now? I have uh, a little bit more than a thousand hours. Really? You got more than a thousand now? Yeah, I'm at thousand sixty one right now. Oh, wow. That's, that's pretty awesome, yeah. <laughs> you spent a lot of time practicing and getting just really, really, really damn good at this game. So yeah, huge props to you. Thank you. However, you evidently avoided ST for a really, really long time, and mostly just the expert book in general. So what was the reason you avoided ST for so long? Uh, it's not so much as I was avoiding it. It's, it's more like I, I was too busy, I guess, um, trying to improve the other books, especially the first and third one, uh, because the, 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 these are the ones I enjoy the most. I've always said I, I really don't like uh, Bulwark as a spin on map. I think it's <laughs> really bad. I've, I've always said that, and I, I maintain that. <laughs> I really yeah. dislike Bulwark. Mm -hmm. And and ST, uh, I guess I kept postponing learning the route, or I, actually routing it because it's a longer map and i think I, I didn't really want to dedicate too much time to it right especially since i was busy with the other other books uh but once i i got times i was satisfied with uh on the the other books uh that's when i started learning st it was actually it took me way less time than I was expecting, actually, so... Yeah, no, it really didn't take you that long to start getting good times at ST. Yeah, it, it took me th three days. Yeah, yeah, like, in your it was in your first day of doing runs, you already were in, like, second place by the end of the day, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I knew, like, I, I've verified so much, so many runs for ST mm, that I, right, I kind of yeah. knew the map. <laughs> That is true. Uh, yeah. But I've always said that the, the route was heavily unoptimized, and I, I could see a lot of improvements here and there. So it was actually thanks to that I could route something a little bit faster. Yeah, that makes sense. My next question was going to be about like what made you finally decide to tackle ST, but I think you already answered that. You were saying that you just saw a lot of things that could be improved and you felt like you were doing okay in the other categories so you just decided to come over to ST finally. Yeah, and to, to be fair and honest, I, I was never very, really confident with uh, Pickaxe. Oh, right, um, yeah. Maybe because I didn't really play a lot with them, especially since I don't like Bulwark, like I said. <laughs> You have, like, hundreds of hours just using your hands, so... Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, exactly. 
like the timing there's a lot of uh, subtle really different different timings that you you need to know to run st at a high level yeah and even some of the other maps like especially like saint helga for example the the big the new big skip i found oh for the 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 crux the nose crux okay yeah it, it requires uh, a really specific timing and on crampons and hands and i had to learn a new way to do this timing and it actually helped me for a lot of other maps as well and that's when i i decided to improve my time on st etc so yeah yeah okay at this point, Nick still had world record, but Zero... <laughs> Zero was hungry. And the only thing that could satisfy his hunger was not only ST world record, but sub 10 minutes ST world record. And it only took him a day to get world record from Nick. God damn it, Zero, you're you're just too good. But he wasn't wrong though. Sub 10 would be soon, and with it we would finally be able to see his runs and techniques. And the following day, we would all get a message in the speedrun discussion chat. Sub 10 Solemn Tempest. He did it. It's been done. The world record for Solemn Tempest has been a long journey from the first sub 30 minute run to single digits. I want to call this the peak of ST world record history and just a huge congratulations to Zero for accomplishing a massive milestone. But like I said, he wasn't going to upload the run until the sub 10, of which this is that run. So let's finally have a look at it, shall we? Oh boy, here we go. Okay, so this, whew, this is Zero's sub 10 minute run and I am super excited to watch this. I actually haven't seen this run yet, so not only will I try to do my best in explaining any new things that I find, but this is my live reaction to it. I haven't seen this run before, so everything that I'm going to see in this run is new to me. Well, no. Every new skip that has been implemented since my 1106 is going to be new to me. But anyways, let's watch this video. Let's see how Zero obtained the sub 10 minute ST time. That's new. Oh my God, that's so much faster. You're up here at 30 seconds. I was up here at 40. Fuck, that is a lot faster. Ooh, hit the ledge and wasn't able to go all the way up. That's a bit, that sucks. Now, what does he do here? I know he does something different. I just don't know what I've been told. Yeah, okay, I guess that works. Yeah. And then he's at the ice wall at 2.03. Okay. That's a pretty good time for the ice wall. Now, what does he do here? I am curious. Does he do the same thing that I did? Or what does he do? Oh, he does the old version of this skip. Huh. That is... Dude, okay. Cool. But then he does this, which is also new. What the fuck? <laughs> that is, that is new. I don't know if that saves time. It probably does. But okay. This section here is the one thing that I do know about this run. I remember Zero was talking about this part, and I remember seeing clips of this skip being found. This is the new part of the run that I'm pretty sure he does. I'm pretty sure he does this. He gets up here. Yeah, and then he does this. So instead of going around that little ledge, he goes up here, and apparently there's a little spot you can stand on there, and then you can just climb up to this little ice patch, and that is insane to me. That's pretty cool. That scales, that, I mean, that saves a lot more time. And then, no way. The reintroduction of 
Gringus skip. <laughs> I actually knew about this the whole entire time, and I was just baiting everyone by saying that Gringus skip was phased out the moment Nick came in. I I knew this whole time while making this video that Gringus skip would come back when Zero did this, because I remember seeing clips of it. Again, I haven't seen this whole run, but I saw clips of Zero performing that new skip, and it implemented or should I say re-implemented the Gringus skip in a new refined way and boy howdy does it just look magnificent. Doesn't that just look amazing? Oh man, you love to see it. But yeah, everything else is new to me so let's just keep watching. Oh, where are you? What the fuck? <laughs> okay, so you can just do that and skip that entire hard ice section that I still did in my best run. Cool, great, fantastic, good to, good to know. Now, one thing I did want to mention that I haven't mentioned yet is if you notice right here when he's standing on an edge, Zero has his pickaxes out, and for the first swing he does when he leaps, he has his pickaxes and then immediately switches to hands. This is peak optimization. You do get a slight bit of momentum boost on the very first swing when launching off solid ground with the pickaxes. Every swing after that with the pickaxes though is less momentum than if you were to use your hands per se. So peak optimization involves being on the ground, getting your pickaxes out, swinging with the first leap, and then doing the rest with regular hand timing. Peak optimization. Get to the little crack. Hopping up here. Classic. And then... Ooh, that is so much faster. No shit. So if, yeah, if you just go a little bit lower to swing off a rock, you can just swing pretty much all the way up that little, little ice patch there. Now, already here, you can tell that this is a really good time, even though there might be some fumbles. He's here at sub seven minutes. If you couldn't tell in my best run, I was here at like seven minutes and 30 seconds or something. So already this is way, way better. Now, my big question is, does he do my skip or does he do it a different way? A way that Caden or Nick did. Let's see, let's see, oh boy, oh boy, oh. He does it the way Nick does it. That's the way Nick did it. That, <laughs> that is the horrible jump that I was talking about earlier, where you gotta have perfect timing from stationary bottom to cramp onto the top. Oh, you drink coffee here, okay. Little fumble, but you shove, you shove yourself into this corner and you swing. Ooh. I do like that idea because this section is really, really windy. So by doing that little optimization, that saves you a little bit of wind hassle and honestly, that's kind of nice. I do like that. Up he gets, this is all relatively normal, but still not like a minute ahead. Well, actually, no, he probably is like a minute ahead. Oh, the why? where are you going? Where are you going? Ooh, that's... I mean, yeah, that is definitely faster, but wow, that is, that's a tough skip. That is tough. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, and then you get up, you use that skip to get up to this point, and then you do this normally. Okay, wow, that is, that is definitely also pretty new. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen that used before. That is... Pretty well done. Ooh, that's, yeah. Ugh. Oh, that, ooh, 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 what a, ooh, scary, ooh, scary fumble, ooh, scary fumble. Okay, um, that's giving me some, <laughs> 
this is giving me some PTSD from my world record run, where if you remember, I'm pretty sure I kept it in. I almost do this exact same mistake. I almost do the exact same in my first world record run. So that's kind of funny <laughs> that Zero also almost does that. Whew, thank God he didn't, or else we wouldn't have had this beauty, this beauty of a run. Oh, it's still losing a little time at the end here. I can't imagine how he's feeling right now, though. The nerves. You can see how shaky he is. The nerves. But he does it regardless. He gets that sub 10 minute run and oh, it is beautiful. It is just beautiful. No, sorry. Uh, da, da, da. Anyways, that is the sub 10 minute run. Wow. Holy shit. That is impressive. What an ending. You can tell that his nerves were through the roof. I can't imagine the shaky hands. I've had that feeling more than once doing ST runs. It gets your nerves spiked. The anxiety gets flowing. But yeah, that's an impressive run. And Zero, just congratulations. Big, big props to you. Anyways, let's continue with the video, shall we? What a beautiful run. You know, it's always a pleasure to watch Zero play this game. He's been consistently speedrunning this game since the start, so it's no surprise how good he is at this game. Now, Zero getting a sub-10 would inspire Nick to attempt to get his own sub-10 ST run, so he would also be attempting that at this time as well. Zero wasn't done either, and knew he could improve his time as well. And on the 24th, he would get a small PB of 6 seconds, with a 9.52, which is a new record, but nothing to really write home about. A few days later, he would get a much bigger PB. He'd end up sharing a time of 9.33 in the Discord, a time that shaved off almost 20 seconds from his previous record. But 20 seconds wasn't enough. Why not 30 seconds? Yeah, that is right. On the same day, he would get a 923. And then... Eh, nothing. I'll be completely honest here, this was where the video was supposed to end. This was ST record for the entire time I was making this script, which took over a month, mind you. But as I finished it and started recording lines, I got a DM from Zero. Yo, I PB'd ST today. I did a few attempts and got a 9.12. I might push for sub 9 in the coming days. Holy shit, a new PB. Let's give a round of applause for Zero. Oh. My. God. Holy shit, sub nine minutes- Oh my god! Now, I did want to also talk to you about your... I'd say two greatest accomplishments with ST. First being your sub 10. You got a sub 10 minute run. And that, I mean, you got the first sub 10 minute ST run. And I mean, I don't know, at least to me, that's that was like a big moment for SD history, getting the record for the time down into single digits. How did you feel about that when you did get it? Um, I was kind of mixed because I, <laughs> I really messed up the ending. I lost maybe 20 seconds uh, in, in the ending. So I, I was I was happy with the run. I was happy with getting. No, let me let me rephrase this. I was happy with getting a sub ten, mm -hmm. but I was not happy with the run itself. So uh, it yeah. was kind of a, a mixed feeling. Obviously, getting a sub ten was like you said a big goal for ST speedruns. So I'm I'm glad I finally got to get the time down to to it. Um, whether it, it, it would have been me or Nick or anyone else, it didn't really matter. I, I just wanted to see a sub-10 on, on the map since forever, so... Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was a great run overall, but yeah, I do remember watching the run, because I had to, I have to watch it and do a little analysis on it for the video. And, yeah, I do remember s seeing you at the end and about the last 20 seconds of the run i could tell that your nerves were really up there <laughs> oh yeah 
I oh, saw yeah. I saw was, the shaky cam. It was uh I, I actually forgot the route like in the, the last few holes. Oh, I just totally <laughs> no. forgot where I was going and I just I just winged it and yeah. Yeah. Thankfully I, I managed to, <laughs> to Yeah, it was still sub ten, yeah. Sneak that sub ten, you know, up there, but uh, it was um it was not very good. But I mean you did it anyways. Speaking of that, you also got a sub nine minute run, which is, you know, even more legendary. So tell us about that. How how are you able to cut down a whole minute from your sub ten run and then how'd you feel about that afterwards? Well, I like I said, my sub my first sub ten run, it was a nine uh fifty eight. Uh like I said prior, it was a sub ten, but the run was not very good. There's a lot of time loss here and there. So I knew it could be easily improved. Um, I just had to practice a little bit more. And then I got at the time down to like 9.33, I think, uh, three days later or something. Yeah, I think it was about that, yeah. So when I got the 9.33, it was actually a very good feeling because I was... I was thinking okay this this run is my first sub 10 minus the mistakes at the end you know so yeah yeah. it it felt like a a fixed run (laughs) but then when i went back to it i was like okay i lost time here i lost time here so (laughs) there's other time losses uh that i could improve on i wanted to find uh faster skips as well um so i just practiced a bit more on some some parts to to find some 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 skips and go faster and then i went back i, I got i got a 9 to 23 uh oh yeah right i remember that yeah it was actually quite fast that i i got this run quite fast <laughs> then i got stuck like nine, my 923 was a, a big wall i remember you were stuck on that time for quite a while it was like well over I won't say well over a month, but it took you about a oh, month. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. and I, I was not try try harding every day. You know, I was playing a little bit every day, but not as much as I I could have. Yeah. Um, because I don't like I I kind of feel a little bit burnt out on the game after a thousand hour. I, I mean, <laughs> that's completely <laughs> fair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially speedrunning, you know, there's there's only so many maps you know 36 maps yeah yeah minus some of them that i never run like boulders but running st over and over again it's it's getting a bit tiring and and a bit boring if i'm being uh, totally honest that's completely fair yeah so yeah one one month later i actually got a an improvement i finally managed to get some of the new skips i found i think i got nine 12 that was or something i think so yeah it was like a 9 12 yeah and it gave me a little bit more confidence to push the, the time uh, under nine minutes because I, I knew it was definitely possible i had my doubts uh, when i got my sub 10 i knew it was not gonna be doable with the current route so i had to find new skips and stuff yeah but i i knew it was gonna go down to sub nine eventually but yeah Amazing sub sub nine fan fucking tastic. Yeah, that's a very good run. the The beginning is very strong. Uh, it's not the fastest I ever got. Like, I did one or two runs earlier, and my my I got faster beginnings, like by four or five seconds or something. But it's I was five seconds ahead um, at the six or seven minute marks, and I know I can save like 10 or 15 more seconds later on so yeah i i think sub 8 40 is doable right now oh okay because yeah i was actually gonna ask you what you think the best theoretical time was i mean 8 30 probably probably uh, with, yeah with the current route if everything is done perfectly 8 30 is doable but okay it's, it would have it would have to be a god run yeah like the, the thing is the, the problem we are very few runners actually running ST. That's true. On a on a regular basis, there's only three, maybe four, five people. Um, so yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's not gonna happen anytime soon. Like 
sub eight, for example, is never gonna happen. Uh, probably, like there's there's no way bigger or faster skips than the the current biggest ones are found. Uh, but like I said earlier, for the the slowest slowest part of the game, that definitely uh, there's the potential for more. Finally, really, as the current king of ST and just all around an amazing player of the game. What plans do you have now with just, I don't know, either ST or the game as the whole going forward? Well, if I ever go back to speedrunning seriously in this game, I think I would like to improve my times on uh, any percent, all peaks and uh, 100%. Mm. I have times in, in these three categories, but they they can be improved a, a lot, so... And it got anything else you wanna you wanna say anything you wanna promote? No, I mean I think uh, we we've covered the the, the speed the ST speedrun arc pretty well. Oh yeah, for sure. I think that sums up what what speedrunning this game is pretty much. You've done a lot for this community, and we as the community are forever grateful for your contributions. Glad to hear it. I've uh, like I said. That's exactly what I wanted to to see, like a, a community thriving on, on this game. I, I never expected to get like 1.5k people on the Discord server. You know, when we started it, I was just it, it was just a a speedrun server at first, but it quickly became the official Pixel Your server. So it was uh, quickly endorsed by a uh, handle endorsed, which was uh, awesome to see. Yeah, it is super cool to see. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of uh, the community and, and the big man, Andos, who made a great game. Yeah, he sure did. And we're all excited for the DLC. Yeah, hopefully it will come back, come uh, come out soon. Relatively soon, yeah. Maybe. We'll see, though. <laughs> it's, it's hope. <laughs> and of course, one last massive thank you for Zero for being in this video and just helping out so much with it. A lot of info and research came from him. So I'm just super grateful to have worked with him for this video. Hold it! But wait, didn't you say Nick was also trying to get a sub 10? <laughs> yeah. After being able to watch a Zero's sub 10, Nick was finally able to learn his tech and was determined to get a sub 10 of his own. After over a week of streaming SD attempts, he eventually would get a damn good run, finishing with a time of 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm not even joking, he got 10 minutes exactly. I don't think he was too happy about that either. Here we are at the end of this long journey. Thank you for making it this far, and I really hope you enjoyed the video because it's definitely been a bit of a departure from the other type of content I make, but I just had a lot of fun making this, and this was my love letter to the community of Peaks of Yore. We have been on a long journey together, and I am so grateful to have been a part of it. Now real quick, let's take a look at the current top 3 ST runners as of today. Number 1 of course, we have Zero with his 858, a well-deserved first place. And number 2 we have... Not Nick, surprisingly. His sub 10 was not only beaten by Zero, but also Baz, who I mentioned earlier as the best boulderer. And the, the funny thing about this is, is his time got verified before Zero's. So technically he had ST world record for a bit. He was pretty happy about that. And of course, number three, we have Nick. His time being the 9.54. So there are the current standings. I'm positive that these standings will already change by the time this video comes out, and that this isn't the end of the journey. But if you want to keep up with any new progress that is made, 
or just want to engage with the community, I've left a link to the community discord in the description. But yeah, that's it. This was a massive project, and I will definitely return to making my other type of videos now, but that doesn't mean I don't have plans for bigger projects in the future. Remember to stay sunny, because you are watching Partly Cloudy. Good night, everyone. You still get world record multiple times. I used times. to. I used to. <laughs> oh no, we can't talk about this at this part of the video, Nick. Oh, this sorry. is, this is uh, earlier. We haven't oh, talked yeah. about that yet. <laughs> Come I mean, on, it, it, man. This won't be in the video anyway. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No, it totally won't be in the video. Could be at the end. <laughs> Could be. Put a clip. Comment down below if you got this far in the video. <laughs> Comment down below if you have seen this clip of Nipple Nick. Make sure to smash like.